so today we're going to talk a little bit about how gut health is related to hormone health because if your gut is a wreck your hormones are going to be a wreck and this is like all about everything i do with my clients so i really want to touch on this so you can learn a little bit more about it and see if maybe your gut health is affecting your hormones so first it's like the gut hormone connection is that everything you eat has to go through your gut and then your gut turns it into the nutrients and sends it off to the different body parts uh, to be used. And so if your gut is off and clogged and not working properly, that nutrients cannot turn into the hormones that it needs to turn into, which means you're gonna have hormone problems. So we really wanna make sure our digestion is like as strong as possible because then our health will mimic what our gut is looking like on the inside. And so things that can lead to poor gut health are a poor diet and also stress, environmental toxins, antibiotics, all of these things can affect your gut health. And so when your gut health is no good, you're not absorbing nutrients properly, which means your body's not getting the building blocks that it needs in order to thrive your gut might start leaking. It might have permeability in it, and then this leaky gut gets into the bloodstream and starts causing a host of problems that you do not want to deal with. And then one of the really big key things is that your gut metabolizes and recycles hormones, especially estrogen. And so that's why it's important for healthy gut. There's actually a whole thing in the gut called estrobolum, and this regulates your estrogen levels. So whether you have too high or too low of estrogen levels, it all starts in the gut. And if your estrobolum is messed up, you're going to have an excess or deficiency of estrogen and have issues with PMS, fibroids, or estrogen dominance. And we don't want that because it means miserable freaking periods. Um, and then also, your gut and your brain are also in constant communication. I'm sure you've heard, and if you haven't, a lot of your serotonin is actually made in your gut, and that's the happy, feel-good molecule. And so when your gut is out of bounds, it can send signals to your brain, which actually increases the production of cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And when you have chronically high cortisol levels, you will be brain fog, fatigue, have messed up sleep, and throw off all of your reproductive hormones, which again means not so fun periods to deal with. Um, and so that's how the poor gut health will affect your hormones. But I have good news. Ayurveda, the ancient Indian healthcare system, has a host of recommendations to help you improve your gut health. So first up is we wanna make sure our digestive fire, which is called Agni in Ayurveda, uh, is as strong as possible. So in order to do this, you need to learn your dosha. If you don't know your dosha, go into the description, take my free quiz, learn your dosha, and then you'll learn how to increase your digestive fire. Um, if your digestive fire is low, the fire is not burning hot enough to turn that nutrients into anything that the body can use. And it just creates toxic sludge that we don't want in our system. Um, so for instance, like everybody wants to avoid cold icy drinks because that puts the fire out. Raw cold foods, also a big no. Um, we want warm, unctuous, oily, yummy foods that are really grounding and easy to digest. Um, and then on another note with the toxic sludge, when that builds up in the system, we get something called AMA. So when your digestion is really low, you're going to build up AMA or toxic sludge. When this happens, you're gonna clog up your whole digestive system, disrupt the nutrient absorption, and create imbalances all over the body, which can ultimately lead to hormonal issues. Because if you're throwing something off in the body, eventually your hormones are gonna be affected if they're not the first thing to be affected. So it's really important to strengthen your Agni so that you don't get this buildup of toxic sludge in your system because once you get that built up, you need to go through a detox process two to four weeks usually um, to clear out the body. And that prolongs your 
path to healing. Um, and so if you have ama, you might be tired, you might have no taste, you might be sleepy after meals, you might be spitting a lot, your tongue might be coated in a white coating when you wake up in the morning. And so if that's going on, it's a sign there's ama, you need to cleanse, and then you start to nourish and strengthen the digestive fire so that symptoms start to resolve themselves. And so some tips to support your gut health and your hormones, of course, from Ayurveda is eat according to your dosha. So depending on what dosha you are, again, free quiz is in the description. You will eat the foods that are best suited for your dosha because that's what your body needs to thrive and stay in balance. And then two, you wanna add digestive spices to your meals according to your dosha, which the spices are actually, after you take the quiz, you get a whole list of information about your dosha and what you should be favoring and not favoring and a lot of that includes the spices and so this will help increase agni make digestion easier reduce your inflammation and support hormone balance just by adding spices to your food because spices are actually usually herbs and so you can get your herbal medicine right in your breakfast lunch and dinner and then another thing that's super important is mindful eating. So it's all about how you're eating, where you're eating, what you're thinking about while you're eating. You don't wanna be eating in a bad mood. You don't wanna be eating in a toxic environment where people are screaming and yelling. You want a nice, calm environment where you feel happy, peaceful, at joy, and you're really enjoying every bite and you're really being mindful of chewing every bite. So no staring at your phone or trying to read a book or you know, do some work while you're eating, just focus on your meal and be grateful and thankful that you have this meal to sustain your body. And then you also wanna support your gut microbiome, of course. So including foods like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi in your diet, or just taking a really high quality probiotic to make sure all that friendly bacteria is staying around and hanging out to ward off anything that tries to come in and cause problems. And then something we don't think about really often when it comes to gut health is our stress levels. So we need to find positive ways to manage our stress because if we're not finding positive ways to manage our stress, that stress is also creating toxic sludge in our system, which is no freaking good. So whether your stress relief is going running, meditating, yoga, journaling, reading a book, taking a hot bath, find your thing that makes you happy and brings you joy to relieve the stress. Because if you're not relieving the stress, it is building up in you, and the more it builds up in you, the more problems you're gonna have. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna stay hydrated. So drinking lots of water, also drinking electrolyte water, so that has salt, potassium, and magnesium in it, um, to make sure that the body has what it needs to keep going throughout the day. We are mostly water. And in order for the water to stay in our system and do what it needs to do, it needs a little salt. And so the electrolytes help everything move along. And plus magnesium is good for sleep, muscle aids, period cramps, all these other things. So adding a little electrolyte water, drinking regular water throughout the day, not ice cold, warm, is really important because this keeps you hydrated. The warm water supports your digestive fire or your agni and it will keep you feeling good. So that's just like a brief overview of how your gut and your hormones are related to each other. I think the key takeaways is that without a healthy gut, your body can't send the nutrients out to the different systems in your body, which means your hormones aren't being nourished. And if they're not being nourished, they're gonna go out of balance. And also if your gut is messed up, your estrogen levels are gonna be messed up, which is gonna cause a whole host of problems like PMS and things like that, that you really want to avoid. So take care of your gut health because that is the first step in healing your hormones is ensuring that your gut is functioning at its very, very best. Because if it's not functioning at its very, very best, no matter what you try to do to fix your hormones, they're not gonna get fixed until you fix your gut health. So please remember that as you embark on your hormone healing journey.